The lack of affordable health care has been an issue in America for many years. More and more Americans each day find themselves unable to afford quality health care. Um, it leaves them other, underinsured or, or uninsured altogether. Even with the Affordable Care Act, there are millions of America's, Americans that are still uninsured. And this is a huge problem in, in America, and there's only one solution. Every American citizen has a right to affordable health care, regardless of age, current or prior health history, or tax bracket. The current health system is broken, and there are grave consequences that come along with that brokenness. After I have discussed those two points in detail, I'm going to propose a solution, which I believe is a valuable solution to this country that we need to implement immediately. So let's begin by talking about the current health care system. It's getting harder and harder each day for the average American to obtain and pay for health care. The current health care system is plagued with many problems, and it needs to be replaced. The Universal Health Care Action Network declares that health care in America is unjust and inefficient. It costs too much, covers too little, and excludes too many. The most glaring problem with this system is that there are too many people on government-sponsored programs such as Medicare, Medicaid, welfare, etc. And that is taking too much money out of the government's budget. Uh, the second big problem is that even a person that has health insurance, they have their premium, they pay their monthly premium, but then when they actually go for health care, they're having to pay high out-of-cost, out-of-pocket fees uh, when they actually have to get treated. The next issue is the tax bracket uh, system. And what the tax bracket system is, it says if you make this amount of money, then you do not qualify for assistance. And that delineates where, uh, where a person falls based on how much they make, whether they can qualify for any assistance or not. And the problem is that number is set way too low, and there are too many people that are not making that number and that are struggling for health care. Uh, there's an instance of this documented in the PBS documentary Frontline Sick Across America. In the documentary, there was a family that had a husband and a wife which were both self-employed, and they had two kids. Collectively, they made around $56,000 a year, which put them just over the, uh, just out of the assistance bracket uh, in, in the bracket. Uh, so between them, the cheapest health care policy that they could find would be about 40% of their monthly income before taxes. So the wife was basically forced to give up her, her self-employment, to give up her dreams and her business, and go find a job uh, that would provide some kind of health care to help cover the costs. Another problem is that the insurance companies are lobbying the politicians to ensure that any health care bill that gets passed will be, will be passed in their favor. Shelby Livingston of the Modern Healthcare wrote that as of April 2017, insurance companies had already spent $6.2 million lobbying over regulations and programs while the Republicans were devising their new health care plan. So in three months, the health care companies lobbied $6.2 million. America needs a health care bill that benefits its citizens regardless of how the insurance market views it. In the current system, persons with a prior health history, even a childhood illness such as asthma or chickenpox could be declared a health risk and could be denied insurance or be required to pay an astronomically high uh, policy rate. And similarly, uh, elderly persons can be denied coverage based on their age regardless of their health history. And unfortunately, there are grave consequences for the citizens of this great country when they are unable to receive adequate and affordable health care. Raul Labrador, uh, a U.S. representative from the state of Idaho, uh, made headlines this year in May when he said that uh, people do not die from a lack of health care. But there was a study that the University of Harvard did in 2009 uh, that found that approximately 45,000 American citizens die each year from a lack of, of health care coverage. And I got those facts uh, from the American Journal of Public Health. And not only do people die without when they don't have affordable health care, but their health declines more rapidly. Something, something minor such as a cold can be some, become something major uh, when it's improperly treated or not treated at all. And so now that I've discussed the problems with uh, the, the crisis and, and the consequences of it, I want to talk about my solution. First, the government will need to centralize the health care system. I propose a system where every American is charged the same percentage across the board for health care, and the government just pays the health care facilities directly. In 1994, Germany set up a universal socialized health care system, which greatly increased the care that their citizens were able to get, and it also lowered the costs overall for health care. If America were to adopt such a system as this, the government could charge a base percentage. Uh, I'm not sure how the budget works, i.e., I would say 10% maybe from every citizen, regardless of the tax bracket they fall into, and in turn provide unlimited health care to every citizen. The centralization would also allow for the elimination of programs such as Medicare, Medicaid, and so on, because every citizen would then have access to health care. So the money that's saved from the elimination of those programs could then be dumped back into the health care pool and lower the rates even further for Americans. 
Uh, having a centralized system would also make it easier for every person to have the routine checkups that they require. And it is a proven fact that when you have the routine checkups that you require, you are less likely to develop a serious illness. Um, and it was also mentioned in that same PBS documentary that I was talking about. Uh, that point alone could drastically reduce the cost of health care and allow the government to charge even less for coverage. Imagine being able to walk into any clinic, anywhere, at any time, with any issue, and be seen and treated with no costs. That is the health care that America deserves. Next, the government will, have to, will need to regulate the industry tighter. They can control the cost of treatment by, by delineating what hospitals are allowed to charge. Obviously, they will need to provide fair compensation to the doctors and, 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 the, and the clinic workers um, for their time and their effort and their education, but ultimately they can regulate it and, and keep the American people from being taken advantage of. They can also mandate which tests can be done in which order based on what your symptoms are uh, to keep the hospitals from performing mundane tests that really won't prove anything, but they're just trying to maybe milk the insurance or something like that. This would keep the cost down for the government and in turn allow the government to provide even cheaper rates to the American people. And I know some people might say, well, this is socialism and, and I'm a socialist and, and our country doesn't stand for socialism, but you know, every single American citizen participates in the social security system. And uh, if you truly don't want any social uh, uh, socialism in your life, then forfeit your social security benefits. I'll gladly take them and uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, so ultimately, a socialized healthcare system is the only way to satisfy the healthcare crisis. With the government controlling and regulating the industry and requiring the people to only pay a set fair rate for health coverage. And you may be wondering what these, what these pictures are that I've had hanging here. Uh, this is Damien right here. Damien had a history of high blood pressure. Unfortunately, Damien could not afford treatment or medication for his high blood pressure, and uh, he had a massive stroke at the age of 32, and he passed away. Uh, this is Erica right here in the middle. Erica had lupus, and what lupus is, it's uh, a disease where your immune system attacks your internal organ tissues and uh, ultimately causes your body to, to fight itself, basically. Um, in, in America today, lupus is a very, very treatable uh, syndrome. However, uh, Erica could not afford health care coverage her symptoms were not treated and she passed away. And then right here in the bottom left-hand corner is Diamante. Diamante had a toothache, but he couldn't afford to go to the dentist to get his toothache looked at. Well, his toothache developed into an abscess. His abscess burst. When it burst, it caused him to get meningitis. The meningitis hospitalized him. At that point, he was forced to go to the hospital, but by then it was too late. And his final night before he passed away, he called his mom from the hospital and he told his mom to pray for him and he died at the age of 12. These are just three cases of Americans that passed away because they did not have adequate health care coverage. It's a very serious issue uh, in this country. And so at this point, I would like to uh, open it up if anybody has a question. Um, yes, Nathaniel. I have a question. Okay. Uh, what's the process if you aren't insured with health care coverage or benefits? What's the process to uh, go about? Is it uh, online applications or uh, over the phone or even agencies per se, uh, insurance agencies uh, to try to provide you with health care? I mean, really all three of those options. You can either go and try to find private insurance through one of the insurance agencies and you have to get all your medical records and, and fill all that out with them and then they'll make a decision and let you know what your policy options are. Or you can go to uh, Obamacare.gov and sign up for the, uh, the Obamacare, uh, the, the Affordable Care Act. Um, either way, those are some of your options. You can do those either over the phone or the internet, or you can go sit down in person and talk to somebody and figure out what your coverage options are. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I would like to conclude by saying that we need to stand for what is right, which is affordable health care for every single American, regardless of age, current or prior health history, or tax bracket. We cannot stand idly by and let our, our fellow Americans suffer or die. We need to write our senators, we need to write our congressmen, and we need to petition them to provide this adequate health care that we all deserve. And if you could just pan the audience real quick, please. All right. Thank you so much. Wow.